What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Tell me if this has ever happened to you. So you have this back-end technology you want to learn. Let's say it's an API. Maybe it's PHP. Maybe it's some kind of database. Maybe Firebase. So you buy a Udemy course or you buy some course or subscription somewhere and you get all excited about learning it and you open up the course and you start taking the course and the first 25% is setting up your front end. And you have to work through that 25% which is usually HTML and CSS, making the front end look pretty before you even get to that technology that you want to learn. And so what happens is you plod through it, and by the time you get through it all and you finally get to that API or that database part, you're done with the project. You're sick of seeing it. And you quit the course and you move on and you don't learn anything. Especially if the CSS is like Tailwind, where it's a ton of classes and you don't have a lot of experience or you don't have a lot of that memorized. And so you end up just typing classes, typing classes. You get this mental fatigue and you're just like, you know what, I'm worn out. I'm not even gonna do this project. I wanna find something else to do. If that's ever happened to you, then be sure you listen up. I'm gonna give you a way to avoid all of that. And then I'm gonna give you why that way to avoid that is the best way to level up your software career. It's going to be a fun video. Let's get started. So first, how do you work on that particular technology without getting in the weeds on all the stuff you already feel comfortable with? So my answer to this is to find projects on GitHub that already have that code in place. Let me show you an example. So here's an app. Here's a simple to-do app in React. And I used this for my fast API example in my last YouTube video. But any backend you want to put together, this project would be a good starting point so you don't have to deal with the HTML and the CSS. And the project looks good. Let me show you what it looks like real quick. npm run start. I just pulled this down, ran yarn install, and I'm running the app now. So it's a very simple to-do app. So walk the dog, submit, mow the lawn, submit. What you have here is a React app storing this data in a state. So if I refresh, it's all gone. It's the perfect project to practice backend data persistence with. So you want to build an API, you want to persist this data to a SQL database, Postgres database, whatever you're working on, Firebase, just grab this app, you have a starting point, and then immediately get to the technology you want to learn. Don't go back to HTML and CSS. Don't start there every time trying to make something from scratch. It's a waste of time. Now, before I give you another couple of examples, I have a couple of examples here for you. Before I do that, I want to talk about the second point that I want to make. And it's really the main reason of this video. The second benefit to doing this is that when you get projects from someone else, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It's on the public web. It's in GitHub. People created it so that you would see it, that you would star it. You can use it. Just don't use it for your app that you're going to grow your business with. But the main reason of doing this is that you get to learn how to read code. You have to open this up. You have to see what's going on before you can do anything else to it. And this is a vital skill as a developer. Here's why. Probably 90% of every job you're going to get in your career, you're going to be onboarding to an application that already exists. And a lot of times it's a pretty significant application. And you're going to be given like a week to figure out the flow of the app, to see how it works for yourself, and to make a commit. That's usually what they do when you get a new job. Read over the code base for a week, figure out how it works, and make your first commit. And then you're off to the races. So if you have practice pulling up apps from GitHub, seeing how they work, it's going to really help you out in your career. In addition to that, and this was a lesson that I learned this past week in the Travis Media community, we did our weekly coding challenge, and another member submitted their final code, and I looked at it and was like, you know what? I didn't even think to go that route. So when I did my challenge, I figured it out, I wrote my code, how I would do it. This person submitted their code coming from a whole different angle that I didn't even think about. I wouldn't have even thought about. And to be honest, it's not really my coding personality. But that's a problem because I tend to approach things the same way, with the same mindset. But seeing his code results made me think, oh, there is this way to do it. So when you're coding your apps, your hobby apps or your apps for your uh, portfolio, you're gonna code a certain way. But when you pull down someone else's app to learn a technology with, like we're just talking about, you're going to see how they do it. And you're going to learn something from it so that when you work on the next project, you'll remember that. And you'll have multiple personalities, coding personalities, to meet the challenge. That's why I think it's so important to be pulling down GitHub repos 
and building on top of them. Now, before we look at some other examples, maybe it's not a backend technology or a language that you're trying to learn. Maybe you're trying to learn computer science fundamentals, or you're trying to get better at logic in general, something generic that will help out your coding growth and your career and your thinking and keeping you sharp. If that's the case, then let me tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant is fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, AI, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills or keep those skills sharp. And it's perfect for busy, self-taught people like me and you, making it easy to master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you're having a hard time nailing down conditional statements, loops, or linked lists. Brilliant will help you visualize and internalize these concepts in an engaging, interactive way. Today, I switched things up and took an intro course on neural networks, where I learned about designing a computer program that performs an image recognition task on a set of very small pixel images. And like I said, Brilliant can help you digest new concepts and solidify old ones that can apply across many different programming languages. You can get started today for free for 30 days and get 20% off an annual plan by using my link below. That link is brilliant.org slash Travis Media. Now back to the video. So let me give you another example. So this one here, anything backend, this is just a React app that's already finished that you can then build the backend into or reference from your backend. Here's another example. This is a to-do list app built in vanilla JavaScript. So you could use this for React. Say you wanna learn React or you just wanna learn backend like we were just talking about. This is a good project to do that with. If you look at the live demo link here, here's the to-do list. Add to your list, uh, mow the lawn. There it is. So from here, I can check it off. I can delete it. I can clear all completed and I can edit it. Walk the cat. That's not a thing, by the way. Walk the cat. So the whole front end's completed for you here. And if you look at the code base, you have to pull it down and dig into what they're doing. And if you look at the source folder, which is usually where you wanna start, You'll see some CSS, you'll see an index.js, some images, and some modules. So let's click on the modules and we'll see that they're using local storage. They're just putting everything into local storage in the browser. So if you wanna update this to save to state in React, you can refactor this to React. You can leave it like this and work on the back end. There's lots of options, but you have things done for you already. Now, if you want a more advanced example, you could download this dashboard here. So this is a bootstrap dashboard. Uh, we have a preview here. This, this is what it would look like. You have charts, you have a pie graph, you have a lot of options over here, kind of explaining the theme and stuff. But everything here is just bootstrap. So it's just CSS. There's no data coming through this. Now it does say $49 here. That's if you want the pro template. But if you want the free one, just click download from GitHub and you'll find the code here. If you download that code, you can see that it's not too complicated as a starter project. So if you look at the package JSON, you'll see bootstrap, Chart.js, perfect scroll bar, and a bunch of Gulp packages. Gulp is like a task runner. It's gonna package up your CSS and do a bunch of stuff for you. And then you'll see that there's a pages folder and a partials folder. So you have your sidebar, your nav bar, your footer. So we have our nav bar here, we have our task bar, we have our footer which is gonna be down here. And then all of this stuff is probably gonna fall within the pages. So there's charts, chart.js. This is probably the main content. Like all of this stuff here, it's just no data. And then forms, basic forms, icons, samples, uh, blank page, login, register, basic table, UI features, buttons, typography, all of that. So you could take this, figure out how it's all laid out and just add a back end to it, persist the data. Send it data. So that could be a more advanced project. But my main point here is that when you learn something, it's best to get right to the point. Don't start out doing things that you've already done, that you're kind of bored of doing. You wanna learn this new technology, just skip ahead and start there by using projects that are already built. And as an advantage of doing that, you learn to read code which will help you in every single job you have in your career. And you get to see how other people put projects together, how they code, how they structure their data, and that's beneficial as well. Other examples could include like an employee management app. Find a project where that's done in JavaScript, it's persisting to the browser or the local storage, and take it and add whatever technology you're trying to learn to it. There's lots of examples out there. And the way to find this is just go to Google and type in something like uh, GitHub employee management app JavaScript. 
hit enter, and you'll see a lot of examples. So I can click this, 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 and you probably want to choose code bases that have more stars. Like this one has 70 stars, which means a lot of people found it helpful, and it's probably well put together. This one has three stars, three stars, three stars, and there's lots of options. Employee tracker, employee info dashboard, holiday tracker. It's all in JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript. Another thing you can do is just go to Google and type in JavaScript projects tutorials, and you'll find stuff like this. 21 easy JavaScript projects, code included. You want the code included. Three real-time JavaScript projects with source code. And the point of looking this up is to get the source code. You don't have to go through the whole tutorial and do all of the front end stuff. You can read about it. That'll give you an idea about the code base, but just find a tutorial that at the end, they say, hey, the source code for this is that this GitHub address. And if you like the layout, if you like the UI, you think it's something you wanna build on, then this would be a perfect approach to take. And that's all I got today. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. See you later.